Well, it's Wednesday night, and you all know what that means. That means right now we got another AEW Dynamite for New Year's Smash. This is the last show of 2022 for AEW Dynamite. I can't wait to see how 2023 is going to be. So we got, of course, the TNT Championship on the line. We got the best of seven series between the Elite and Dev Triangle in a False Count Anywhere match and plenty more stuff to talk about. But first things first, we're going to review. As you know, today is the 28th of December. Over there on Japan, it's December 29th. Stardom should be having their up their last show of the year, uh, Dream Queendom at Rio Goku. Right now, I'm going to be reviewing the last show before this one, which is the year end climax that happened on Christmas Eve in Cork and Hall, which we saw, of course, what uh, transpired with the situation with Waka and many other matches that would lead to Rio Goku and all that stuff. So, but also. We got some news updates to talk about, and I think one of them is some exciting news <coughs> and interesting news that we definitely going to be talking about. So, let's get ready for another episode of Deleted Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to Deleted Wrestle Zone. All things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jay Rod here. So let's begin with stardom with the year end climax that took place on December 24th of this year, which is ironically my birthday on that day. <laughs> So, yes, yeah, so as you know, right now, this is the 28th of December, and right now we are going, to, right now in Japan is, of course, the 29th, which is the Dream Queensdom show, where we have, of course, um, the last show of the year. But right now, we're going to review this one completely. That one, I will review when that, when it appears on <coughs> WatchProWrestling.org, which, where I normally watch all the wrestling content. Our first match, we have trios action. We have Rina, Momokogo, and Hanan in a three-way match. Uh, as you know, Rina and Hanan are the two sisters. But the only advantage in this particular match is, of course, Momo and Hina are part of Stars. Momokogo is a member of Stars, and so is Hana. So that kind of gives an advantage. But, of course, Hana is not afraid to, <coughs> to fight back against her own teammate, which, of course, is of course um, Momokogo. But there were some good moments between both Rina and Hana since they're both sisters. As you know, he, Rina is always playing that she is the far more better of out of the three. But today it did not happen that way. It was, of course, Hana with a reversal jackknife that allowed her to win the match. Next up, we got a very interesting match. We have stars consistent of Saya Ida, Koguma, Hazuki, and Momo. Wanted, Mayu uh, Iwatani, they all dressed up. Azuki has the reindeer, and of course, <coughs> the rest as Santa Claus. But as for their opponents, they're all dressed up in a in, in reindeers, you know, which is interesting. But Utami Ishida decided to come out in, with her own entrance, riding a horse, which is the same one that we saw Taguchi war, uh, rode it on. So I thought it was kind of interesting that that happened. I think Taguchi did that the day before. Um, I think it was on the 23rd of December for Road to Tokyo Dome. <coughs> Excuse me. But it was a very fun match, very interesting, you know. I mean, uh, I think it was pretty uh, fun that they all dressed up, have a little bit of fun. But, however, it was Mayu Itani with a moonsault press on Utami Yoshida that allowed her to win the match. But, however, Santa Claus came by, which, of course, is dressed up by none other than the boss himself, Rossi Ogawa. Gave them a gift for Christmas, so I thought it was real nice of them to do that. But unfortunately, at the end of during the post match comment, Mayu lost the gift. <laughs> I don't know how that happened, but <laughs> it was so funny. Now, this one I have to say, this is the most interesting storyline I've I've watched in this particular show. We have Seven Up, our current 
winners of the Goddesses Tag League, um, Nanane Takahashi and you taking on the Cosmic Angels, Waka Tsukiyama, Natsupoi, and Tam Nakano. As you know, recently we have been seeing not a bit of the, how to say, trouble in paradise type with the Cosmic Angels, more specifically with Waka and Tam. Now, it's nothing like personal, but more, I'll explain a little bit later about that. But, however, this match was more like an assessment for Nanane Takahashi to see how much passion does Waka has. Waka requested a singles match against her for her to inject her with passion on the next New Blood event. So, basically, she said she'll give her the match if she throws in her passion to her on that particular. I have to say she kind of did. But there was a moment where, of course... I don't know if it was, if what that suplex was thinking. She was about to do a German suplex, but Waka gave her the assist, but she got pancaked by you. I'm like, oh my good. But however, it was of course <coughs> Nanane with a running with the sliding D onto Waka that allowed her to win the match. However, Nanane was impressed by her that she threw in a lot of passion, better than of course she claims with um, Melt here, Moses consistent with Tam and Natsupoi. But however, this is the most difficult this uh, situation that I think, in my opinion, as Tam, who's been the leader of Cosmic Angels from day one, was the hardest thing for her to do. She said that at this rate, Waka cannot win the match. She tells her there's nothing she can do for her now. But she's going to give her an, she gave her an ultimatum that she has three months. That if she doesn't win within those three months, then she's being asked to leave Cosmic Angels, which many fans, especially those who are big Cosmic Angel fans, are kind of not stunned, but more like can't believe that's happening. I know there are fans who talked about how Waka was not a good fit with Cosmic Angels. You know, if you guys want to know why she was in it, Tam said that she that Waka reminded her of herself how she was in that same position, but. Tam does believe in Waka, but right now the situation is, why did this happen? Why did Tam do this? The problem was, is Ram Kaicho. If you guys remember, Ram Kaicho put the blame on Waka's failures onto Tam. So basically it got into her head that she felt this is your responsibility as the leader of Cosmic Angels for having a weak link like, like Waka. So I think that really got into her head and... Deep down, Waka did not want to do this. She, I mean, Tam did not want to do this. She did not want to do this to Waka one way or the other. And right at the end of the show, there were photos where you see Tam crying. Like, everybody were having, having fun at the end of the show, but not Tam. Like, this thing has put her on a lot of pressure. I mean, things have gone differently. I mean, Unagi le left to go freelance, but she is coming back. On the tw uh, for Rio Goku, Mina got injured, but also she's coming back. But things have been a lot worse for him. I mean, this is the second time for their Christmas for Tam's Christmas has gone the worst. If you remember last year when Julia uh, actually showed up wearing that silhouette mask, you know all this and that criticizing her. Now it's like it's it's history repeating itself again. So that's what explains the whole thing. But hopefully, if Waka can pick up a win all the way in those three months, hopefully she can stay. I know some fa there are fans that want her to stay. You know, personally, I would too because you know, I don't see her fitting in anywhere else. You know, that's the thing. I mean, if Tam was willing to take her in, that's how I see it. But we'll just wait and see what happens. Now, our next match, we have all members of prominence for the first time being in this match. We got Risa Sara, Suzuki, Akane Fujita, Mochi Natsumi, and Kurumi Harige taking on <coughs> Oda Tai's consistent of Saki Kashima, Momo Wananabe, Fukigen Def, Asuko Tora, and Ruka. Now, the only reason this match was a set is because three of the five members of prominence will be challenging for the artist belts against the members of Oda Tai consistent of Saki Kashima, Momo Wananabe, but Starlight Kid was not involved in this match. But that's the thing. However, now you know Oedo Tai how they cheat. You know, they use weapons. Now, apparently this is how I think prominence are questioning. How can they allow this to happen with them to use weapons? Oedo Tai doesn't play by the rules. They claim that that's how they run things no matter what. But, however, they think that 
because Fukigen Death picked up the win on uh, who she picked up on Mochi Atsumi allowed her to win. However, in the post match, Saki Kashima and Momo Wananabe claim that they are confident they're going to win the Hardcore's rule match to retain <coughs> the artist belts. But however, here's the thing: there are many fans that don't believe that this that they're going to uh, retain the titles due to the fact that why if they're going to retain the titles, then why are they involved? Why did they separate the three competitors for Triangle Derby? Their fans are talking that there is the possibility the prominence will win this one because A, we it's already like seems like the writing is on the wall, and B, prominence are well known in the hardcore and deathmatch scene. That's the thing that they don't get. They have run that that side of the of the world. I don't think these guys have ever been an experience. I hate to see Kashima being all bruised up. The uh, starting of 2023. <coughs> now our next match, we got Aruki, Aruki Amasaki versus and Starlight Kid taking on Queen's Quest Azumi and Sai Kamitani. This match was insane in every aspect. As you know, Amasaki is challenging Kamitani for the Wonder of Stardom Championship, aka the White Belt. Man, it was so good. But, however, this match ended in, t in a 20-minute tw uh, time limit draw. I mean, it sucks, but that's how it is. So, we have a standstill. But the obvious question is, m right now, if, m if of course, um, Saya beats Umasaki in this match, she is one step closer to breaking the record of Momo Wananabe's uh, most defense records. So, that is the one thing that is on her bucket list. I know Starlight Kid would do everything in her power to stop it. She believes that <coughs> you're not gonna make it. I mean, that's exactly what the Starlight Kid did with with uh, DDM, or more consistently formula no known as My Him Poi, if you guys remember. But we'll see what happens. Now our next match is an elimination match. We have DDM consistent of Tekla, My Sekurai, Himeka, and Ma Micah and Julia taking on. All uh, the members of God's Eye, Nanami, Tomoka Inaba, Mirai, Ami Sori, and Suri. So this is how the el elimination match went. Tekla was eliminated by Suri. Then Nanami was eliminated by uh, Julia by submission. Mirai was eliminated over the top by Mai Sakurai, who apparently she fe felt happy she eliminated her. But she was the one who got eliminated by <coughs> Ami Sori, which is... Her opponent for the future belt. I don't know when that belt will take place. And then, of course, there was a double elimination by both Micah and Tomoka Inaba. And then, finally, it was Julia and Sudi. Sudi actually uh, eliminated herself just to eliminate Julia. But it ended with Ami Sudi and Himeka being at the end. But it was Himeka with the running power bomb that sealed the deal for DDM to win. So, however, Julia <coughs> is saying... That this hopefully by the end of this year, that they will win everything. Now keep in mind, my him are in the number one contenders contenders to obtain the goddess's belt. They have to go through um, BMI two thousand, consistent of Oda time members Ruka and Natsuko Tora. Now you guys probably know they probably use weapons, but the other opponents is New Eras, which is members of God's Eye, consistent of. Mirai and Amiseri, who had challenged those belts at least four times. So, will they pull it off? We don't know until that day happens. And then, of course, we cannot forget that Julia has an important match. She's determined to dethrone Sudi, saying that she's going to make a better world with the red belt, that she will build a much better, better, better era than uh, Sudi did. Because if you guys remember, Utami saying. Nothing has changed with Sudi, uh, with Sudi as champion. She felt that Sudi should have built a better world, but she did not. But we don't. I don't know if you guys would agree with that. I mean, she did have some best matches of 2022. So we'll just wait and see about that. And of course, by the end of the show, they all celebrate throwing autograph balls. But I did mention about the whole thing with Tam Nakano crying. They did not show that, but uh, you probably will see it. But uh, for now, we will see what happens on the 29th, which is tomorrow for Rio Goku. Hopefully, I get to see it because I don't know if WatchProWrestling.org will be able to stream it live because I would love to see it. 
Um, but we'll just wait and see about that. Um, <coughs> but right now, I think it's time to move on with AW Dynamite's New Year Smash. Okay, AEW Dynamite New Year Smash. Now, it opened up with Brian Danielson versus Ethan Page. Now, the reason this match took place is because, as you know, Brian Danielson has a personal vendetta against um, MJF for what he did to Regal. But Ethan Page felt like he's being overlooked. Like, here's the thing I don't recall Brian Danielson. Commenting that he wants the belt, but Ethan Page feels like if there's anybody who's going to kick MJF's ass, it's going to be me. So it feels like that. So that's the reason the match was happening. But when both competitors were in the ring, MJF, well, <coughs> he was in the VIP box with some hot chick. Uh, <coughs> you know, watching this match unfold. But. It was a pretty good match. I think it was like it's showing, okay, Ethan Page, he's fired up. Like, he wants MJF. He wants to get his hands on him. Not to mention he wants the title. But Brian Danielson wants to hurt him for what he did to William Regal. And I think that <coughs> says it all. But don't count out the experience and toughness of Brian Danielson when he applied his submission move onto Ethan Page and knocking him out. He was already passed out. And I don't think this pleased one way or the other, too, of course, um, Stokey Hathaway knowing that he lost this way. So, we'll see what happens then. Now, Warlow gets an interview with Renee, talks about Samoa Joe about this. But once he was about speaking, he was initially attacked by Joe with a pipe, hitting him on the knee. Now, throughout the entire severity of the night, we were trying to, they were trying to get a medical update on Warlow to find out, is he good or not? Now, is it smart for him to go? No. But knowing Warlow, you probably think, huh, he's going to do it anyway. But we'll get to that, which is our main event. Now, regarding of medical updates, we do see Hangman Page along with the what's left of the Dark Order, uh, Silver, Reynolds, and Uno, who are trying to <coughs> support Hangman Page. But however, the the doctor at the time was saying to him that he's doing good. But the problem is that if he keeps continuing to brawl against John Moxley, then it may not happen. But it looks more like he could see him happen. This match could take place in L.A. on the 11th of January, which ironically is the day where I'm going to go to see AEW, which I'm looking forward to that. So we'll see what happens then. Hopefully by the time next week happens. It, or Rampage, it could finally be announced. Now, our next match, we have the Blackpool Combat Club, Claudio Castanoli and John Moxley taking on Top Flight, Dante, and Darius Martin. Now, this is more of a revenge match for Claudio due to the fact that he initially lost in that Battle Royale last Friday on Rampage, and I think that sets the tone on that. But I did like how... The top flight, they hang in there. They know they're not dealing with some slouches. They're, de <coughs> <coughs> they're dealing with a couple of men that will like to break your bones. And I think that's a good thing. They use their agility and quickness to try to overcome it. But however, Darius stood right in the face of Claudio Castanelli. And then, bam! Right with the uppercut or something. He took him out completely hard, giving... Blackpool Combat Club, the win they, they needed. And I think Claudio might have got his retribution after what happened last Friday. Now, our next interview, we do see this thing with Kip Sabian. Now, it seems that Kip Sabian made a pleading argument about how he eliminated Orange Cassidy out of the Battle Royal, which does put him in a constituency for the title. But however, Trent's, uh, Trent Beretta reminded him that he's the one who eliminated Kip Sabian. So basically, Gorge Cassidy says, sure, I'll face you. And then Trent's like, are you sure? Yeah. Kip, I don't know. He felt like he was about to say, he's like, you know what? This is going to be interesting. Good luck. So I think he's like, okay, two guys are going to, two friends are going to beat the crap out of each other. 
I got to see this. So that kind of feels that way. So that match will take place on Rampage. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, our next match, we have Hook taking on Braylon Lynx. You probably can guess this match ended with a Red Rum, which it did. However, in post-match, now you know Stokey Hathaway starts out with this conspiracy. They still have their issues towards Hook. So he Stokey Hathaway comes out with Lee Moriarty and Big Bill Morrissey. It was a numbers game, but luckily Jungle Boy showed up and dealt with Lee Moriarty. What we see how Hook, he is showing no fear whatsoever to Morrissey. Now, I was impressed how Hook was really ready to take out Morsi, but Morsi countered what he was about to do, a T-bone something. And then, of course, he was about to choke slam him, but Jungle Boy picked up a 2 by 4 that would make Hacksaw Jim Duggan very, very proud. Whacked him right in the back, in the abdomen, but nearly inches to take out his head. And Morsi was livid, like saying that he can't believe that Jungle Boy was going to go that far. Well... What you expect? You put him through a dumpster. That's how it goes. <laughs> but <coughs> this whole thing between Hook and Jungle Boy against the firm is far, far from over. Now, Jericho, as you know, he is not happy with the results of what happened last week. Now, he did offer Ricky Starks an opportunity to join the JS. He felt that he made the biggest mistake of his life. But... Since what he did to Action Andretti last week, he said he's going to teach him a lesson for turning him down. Now, our next interview, we have Swerve along with his thugs, you know, talking about how this whole thing happened. Now, Swerve is saying, look, things were different, okay? He didn't want to do what I wanted him to do. Like, the thing is this, Swerve was willing to cross the line no matter what. But Keith Lee is not like that. But, of course, <coughs> Wheeler Yuta, let's just say he's up for a challenge to look for someone who's a bit more violent than him. So, he's issued a challenge to him on Rampage. And, of course, Swerve, he has no problem with it. So, that's going to be interesting, too. <coughs> now, our next match is match six in the best of seven series. This is where... It gets interesting. Right now, in this particular moment, in this particular timing, or should I say, the uh, Death Triangle already are up by three, and the Elite by two. However, the scenario of this plays out. If Death Triangle wins, then it's over. But if the Elite were able to tie it, then we go to the seventh match, and this, like I said, ironically, will take place on the 11th of January in LA. So that's going to be interesting. So we'll see about that. But the match was a false count anywhere this time. They started in the back. Took it all the way out. And all this and that. But at some point in moment. We lost track with Phoenix and Kenny Omega. We didn't know what's going on. And it was like very interesting. And of course Phoenix shows up. Jumps off whatever structure on top of the stage platform was that. And then Kenny give a very deadly victory. I thought that was crazy. But if you guys notice the white shirt he was wearing, he's wearing a Kota Ibushi shirt. Just put it out there, folks. So <coughs> I don't know if he's calling him, hey, come here, man. Come to AEW. <laughs> but however, this match went everywhere to all the way to the ring. But what I find interesting is we see two moments taking place in the ring. We see Pack dealing with Matt Jackson. We see Kenny dealing with um, Ray Phoenix. So it was a battle of who's going to pick up the win. And this one, it was Kenny with the one wing angel off through a t table or something, whatever structure it was. He pinned Ray Phoenix and won. <coughs> so basically, it ties up. But it makes you wonder about the situation. I know that in this case, I don't know how Pac would feel about how Ray Phoenix was responsible for this loss. I don't know. I have that distinct feeling. I'll give it some thought at some other time when that day comes. Now, our next interview, we have Ricky Starks. Now, he gave us about this. 
he appreciates the uh, the comments that Jericho said that he's a star, but Ricky Starks, I have to say, he made a valid point about himself. He's loud, he's obnoxious, he's cocky. He's willing to admit that. He's like, he's like saying that because why would he need to learn from someone like Jericho? You're saying all this about him, that he needs proper guidance? I mean, look, Ricky Starks, I have to say, he is that guy we definitely need, who is, yes, he's he's obnoxious, he's a bit cocky, he knows exactly what he's going to do, what he's going to say. But he will face Jericho, <coughs> uh, I believe, this coming Wednesday in Seattle, which is going to be good to watch. So we'll stand by on that. Now, our main event <coughs> is the TNT Championship. Samoa Joe comes out. We weren't sure what Warlow was going. Like I said, the entire process of the entire show was, is Warlow going to be 100%? Well, he doesn't seem like he's 100% because he walked out. Against Doctor's advice, he wanted to go up there. I mean, he managed to hang in there no matter what, how pain he was. He could have pulled the... the the Symphony Powerbomb, but Samoa Joe knew he was going to use his legs for that. But unfortunately, Samoa Joe applied the, the rear naked choke, choking him out, <coughs> calling it the match, saying it's over. Even Warlow had no clue what happened when he came to. And then, of course, Samoa Joe decided to give a beatdown and then cut his ponytail. And then, of course, here comes Darby Allen, who feels like he has some unfinished business with Samoa Joe. So that's going to be interesting. But off camera, there was a moment where we see uh, someone posted it on Twitter saying that uh, what happened to his ponytail. So someone who, one of the staff members in the outside of the ring had to tell him. So, <laughs> so I thought it was very interesting. So this... So Rampage will be, of course, the last show of 2022. The start of the new year will be in Seattle, and we cannot. And as I said before, the following week after that, we got the LA show, which I'm going to be going to check it out. And I'm so excited! I'm so pumped for it. So, I think that's pretty much it with all the reviews. I believe it's time for news updates. <laughs> Okay, here's our news updates. I want to put this on record for everybody to know. While all this is happening with AEW, at around the same time we had the latest AAA show, Noche de Campeones, which translates to Night of Champions. Now, two things updated to happen. First one, the AAA World Tag Team titles were put on the line, and we have brand new Tag Team Champions, Dralistico and Dragon Lee, Los Hermanos Lee. Now, this is a crowning moment. I think, I felt like, to be honest with you, I felt the writing was on the wall for FTR to lose the titles. But, like I said, I haven't seen the match. I will put that on the next episode or two. I'm not sure. Uh, I'll explain later at the end of this whole thing. Um, <coughs> what happened is, we weren't sure. That, I feel like this was going to be like that. But, the most surprising news, and it's already been buzzing all over, all over the internet, all over social media. Dragon Lee announced that this would be his possible match, last possible match in Mexico, because he gave the biggest news that he has signed a deal with um, WWE, which is amazing news. Now, I'm a little concerned over one thing only. It's nothing bad. I'm I was way concerned over the fact that they were going to force Dragon Lee to take off his mask. He talked about this before. I just hope they don't. That's the one thing I don't want. They already did that with Ombito Car Carrillo. We don't need that with Dragon Lee. So, let him keep his mask. But, nevertheless, he deserves this. You know, we know that things have been not good for him. Uh, not going back to New Japan. All this and that. I don't know what was the deal with him with AW. But we'll see what happens later. So we can um, congratulate him that. 
Now, on related news to AAA, Conan co- announced very something, not shocking, but more like surprising news, but at the same time, like, what the hell? He announced that Sammy Guevara and Tay and Tay his wife Ty Mello have been stripped of the AAA World Mixed Tag Team titles. This was surprising. Now, Conan explained it why. It turns out that they are have failed to commit to Triple H uh, matches. They missed out not one, but two, but three events from them. The reason is this, according to Conan, they've been at making some demands. Sammy said he wants his own referee. Ty Mello wants his, her own hairstylist. I feel this is bad for both of them. I mean, the last time we dealt with something like this, it was with, with Tessa Blanchard, if you guys remember, with the Impact World Championship. But this... Is crazy. Now I haven't heard anything from both Sammy or Ty, but I wouldn't be surprised that they would demand to re- they want this that they should come back that they have no right to strip them. But however, Conan said they have to move on, so they actually set up a match to crown new tag champions. I mean, I can tell you who won, but I haven't seen the match yet. Ah, eh, what the hell? Let's just say it. <coughs> uh, Flamer. And Abismo Negro Jr. So they are now the new AAA World Mixed Tag Team Champions. Now, I highly doubt they have the titles. I don't know for sure if Sammy or Ty are willing to mail those titles back to Mexico. Because I'm sure that they made themselves look bad. Now, Wrestling Observer are saying right now, or or I don't know who said it. They're saying that there is the possibility that AAA and AEW are no longer working together. That's not yet been confirmed or been established yet. We will find out when it is when it comes out. So I wouldn't I wouldn't say I hold my brain. I wouldn't be surprised if it is. But given to what they did, it's not good. Now, recently, uh, wrestling news outlet here in SoCal, California, known as SoCal Uncensored, has an, has re- put out a, a post about. A promotion called TWAE uh, are booking Mandy Rose. Yes, so her name is on it. Her picture is on the poster. It, it kind of like was, okay, is this 100% for real? Because here's the thing. this Mandy Rose still has that whole non-compete clause going. We don't know. But according to the promoter of this show, he's saying that he talked to Mandy Rose, but he's threatening to sue SoCal Uncensored for posting it. But the thing is this, he knows he's being scammed over this thing, but the problem is, it's like, okay, is really going to happen? Is Mandy really going to make an appearance, or is he just upset that someone spoiled the beans? I don't know. That is still unclear, <laughs> but let's just wait and see what happens. Now, as you know, WrestleMania is almost coming they announced for the upcoming WrestleCon event taking place around that time. We have, of course, La Rosa Negra has been announced to be the next guest to make an appearance. Now, our updates for West Coast Pro for their Can You Work Fridays event that takes place on the 6th of January. Two matches have been announced. We have Kevin uh, Bl- uh, Blackwood taking on Starboy Charlie. And then we got Nick Wayne taking on Alec price that's no alex shelley that's gonna be huge right there now for our update with gcw (coughs) for gcw for the la show taking place on um february 18th leo rush makes his return now uh jcw jersey championship wrestling update for the battle bowl event new three new entrants have been announced uh we have mago formerly known as drastic boy uh, Yoya and Janai Kai have been announced to be participating in that. Now here, now our next thing, this is really interesting. Uh, Sports Illustrated has announced their top 10 wrestlers of 2020. Uh, 2022, my bad. Uh, let's see, let me pull it up because... Uh... 
All right, uh, let me pull it up. <laughs> So this is what uh, they announced. We have Masa Slamovich at 10. Catch Wheeler and Dax Harwood. Both of them are at neck to neck. Uh, 9 and 10. Hijo de Vikingo, number 7. Jamie Hayter, number 6. Will Ospreay, number 5. Roman Reigns, uh, number 4. Bianca Belair, number 3. John Moxley, number 2. And Seth Rollins number one. I have to say this is pretty good right here. You know, uh, Masha was uh, really happy to hear that she she made the cut to number ten. So, what do you guys think of it? Is Sports Illustrator right about this? About the order this way? Well, you tell me. Leave a comment down below. Now, for our last update, this is coming from the G for Wrestling Revol uh, Revolver. As you know, we had a night at a, uh, <coughs> a night at the Mox Moxberry. That will take place on the second. We have two matches that have been announced. I already announced certain wrestlers that will be that have been booked. We have Blair Onyx will be facing the problem. So let's see how much of a problem she will have to deal with. <laughs> and then of course, Evil Uno and Jake Crist. Now both these matches, first time ever. These two have never faced each other before. But it's gonna be good. Now finally, <coughs> I Kind of forgot about this since we're getting closer and closer to the end of 2022. Wrestling Revolver had this thing called the tw the 2022 N year-end awards. So five categories have been announced, and here's who won for best for year uh for this. For wrestler of the year, we have Speedball Mike Bailey. Tag team of the year, Dad Scout. Dan the Dad and uh, Man Scout Jake Manning. Moment of the year. The Switchblades re uh, reunite both Sammy Callahan and John Moxley. Match of the year. Speedball Mike Bailey versus Kenta. And show of the year. Season finale. Now, do I agree with this? Do I believe this is the right one? I have to say... Mike Bailey has been on a tear throughout 2022. I can agree with that. Dan Scout, well, it was a rather unique team starting out, but I think it was pretty good. Uh, Switchblades Reunite, well, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't know those two were part of a tag team, but Reunite, okay, makes sense. Match of the Year of uh, Speedball and Kenta, that Philip Plus. Season finale. I have to say it was a good show for that one. Yes, I think I like this this one completely. So, uh, what do you tell me? What you guys think? If you guys haven't seen any of the wrestling revolver shows, check it out. You can subscribe to them on Fight TV for four ninety nine, or if you guys don't want to pay the four ninety nine, you can go on WatchProWrestling.org and watch it from there. So you guys can tell me. So I think that's pretty much it right now with our news updates. It's time to call it a day. Well, I hope everybody enjoys this episode. Um, coming up, I made an executive decision for the next episode. I'm just going to review one particular show. And I believe this one will be a good one. And it's going to be Stardom's Dreams Queen. Now, this episode featured the year and climax that took place on Christmas Eve. But I did not think that we're going to put the um, the latest show right away on WatchProWrestling.org. Uh, so I might be having some sleepless nights over this. But I have to say it's going to be worth it because I know there's a lot of things expecting on that particular day. I mean, with Mina Shirakawa and Unagi reuniting, uh, <coughs> of course, the high-speed titles on the line. Prominence will be making their first championship run for the, tr the artist belts. Uh, the goddesses belts are on the line and a few other things that I feel <coughs> that's going to be good to enjoy. So I, that's what I'm going to do. So the next episode is going to feature that. But if there's any news updates that uh, have to be out right now, then I'll do that right away just to get out of the way. And then, of course, I'll do another video that will feature um, uh, uh, MLW and uh, Impact Wrestling. So hopefully that's the case. Hope. <coughs> 
but we'll find out soon enough. If there's any other shows that I want to review, I'll put that too. So I'll be figuring that out. You know what? I'll probably put that with um with Triple A. I feel that's something I want to do just to get that out of the way and maybe add another one by itself. But like I said, I'm going to have the Stardom show by itself and we'll go from there. So <coughs> I'll see you guys on the next episode. So I must bid all of you adieu. So goodbye. Mwah. And have a nice day. Bang. <laughs>